What's up, everybody? This is Fairly Awesome Podcast, episode 25. I'm your host this week, Nate Bushing, and I'm joined by Ryan McDowell. Hey, guys. And Chris Keen. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's a, it's a short, or I, I say short podcast, but a short crew this week. Indeed, we are one man down. We are one man down. Josh had a flooding basement and uh, stayed up late cleaning some of that up, so unfortunately unable to join us today. Ooh. Two words. Water sports. <laughs> that man is out of control. <laughs> <laughs> to bring that in. You put the put the volleyball court up downstairs in the basement. Sure, those water sports. Oh, oh, man. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't Soak know. it in. He's not here to defend himself, so we can go all. We pretty day. much can go. Well, I mean, twenty five episodes though. For real, this means we've been going for over a year. <clears throat> well, yeah, because it's bi weekly. So yeah, yeah. that well, would be. There was, there was a little bit of downtime in the in the winter when you know, like it was. Fucking eight below zero feet of snow and <laughs> and eight below zero and eight below zero and eight below is a horrible movie. Uh, what? Uh, I don't know. Isn't there like an eight below? I feel like there's a movie that was eight below. Uh, no, the Snow Dog. Isn't no, there? Like that there's a Cuba Gooding Jr. Right? <laughs> horrible yeah, no, Cuba. That was, that was a bad movie. Oh, jeez. Speaking of bad, Sharknado Two. That was a bad. Movie. <laughs> Speaking of bad movies, just kidding. Yeah. That's not a transition at all. Uh, we've got a um, myriad of topics this week that we're going to be talking about. Three, if you are counting at home, for those who are playing the home drinking game. Um, so that's three shots we'll be taking. It's a, each time we switch a topic, you yeah. take a shot. Yes, exactly. Is, is it shot for, like, bad segue? Yes, it? yes. There's that. Oh, I, my. You're like, so speaking of mushroom stamps, <laughs> segue. That Google. <laughs> the no. U.S. Postal Service. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be a good one. Come that on, that would be, be a good segue, segue, you guys. That's two shots for a good segue. So we're going to be talking about video games. Um and why uh, the burden of Google and the internet is kind of ruining games and making them a little easier. Chris, do you want to expound yeah. on that for me? I read an article that kind of made mention of it a little bit, that perhaps some of the, um, I can't think of a good word, the easinessing. The convenience? <laughs> the conven- no, not the convenience. That's such a difficult word. <laughs> no, not convenience. Like the, the making games... Quasi easier. So the babification. Like, beta, babification. Babification. Of video games. Yes. Okay. Babe, babe fishing. Babe, babe, um, no. Yeah, like making games quasi easier or the kind of the advent of the first person shooter, you know, straight path from the beginning to the end, no puzzles, nothing really hard that you got to do, mm-hmm. might actually not be so much related to lazy programming, which are lazy developers, which I guess is still probably kind of factors in, but. And the fact that regardless of how difficult you make a game, once somebody figures the puzzle out, they can post it on the internet, or if you know, if a game guide comes up on the internet And everybody knows that. Right. Yeah. And you get stuck, you just go to the internet and look it up. Clearly there will be a YouTube video showing you where said collectible is or how to solve that difficult puzzle that you're being Right, right. Like know. there there are videos of every single level of Angry Birds on how to beat Angry Birds every single level to get three stars. So is it hmm. I'm wondering if, if this is legitimate excuse that, you know, because you can just now look it up on Google, excuse me, um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, why make the game really difficult? Because for all the effort you put into it, somebody's going to ruin it for everybody else in like 10 minutes on YouTube. I think it's it's left up to the the <laughs> hand of the beholder. I, I won't say I the beholder, but whoever whoever is playing the game has the ability to go out and do that versus having... A puzzle that's so difficult that they can't finish it, you know, finish a game. There's people that used to quit games yeah. because they were like, oh, I just can't figure this out. Or it's like a mist or a puzzle where they don't know what to, you know, some of those uh, old adventure games where you would have like, oh, I got to like drag this item on this item and I didn't know that. And it's like the most random thing, you know, yeah. like uh, I'm trying to think of some of the old you classic. Like click the lower left. Day of the Tentacle screen. or something like that where you got to yeah. click on something that you didn't, you didn't know was actually a part of the puzzle. Yeah. So by that means, yes, it would make it easier to solve a puzzle, but I, th- I think it's more that the choice has been given to the gamer as opposed to the um, game creator on whether or not you can find this information, right? You know, it's still there, but um, I, think, I think I would argue that the easy... I almost said easification. That's not... <laughs> God, <laughs> what is making it? games easier. making games easier? Easy nessifying. That, that sounds seems very legit. Technical. It seems legit. Yeah. You know, uh, 
No, uh, I would say that that is more a a stem from the uni universal universalifying. We're trying to come up with all sorts of <laughs> wow. big words here. No, but <laughs> somebody went awesome back and watched five podcast. years. Yeah, somebody went back and watched five years worth of George Bush speeches. <laughs> Strategery. Strategery. That's a strategio. Easy to specify. Easy to okay. so, yeah, so, anyway, so your yeah, point. Anyway, I would say that it's more making the games accessible to mainstream audiences. That's why they're made easier so that people are like, oh, I just push forward and hold X and now my guy runs up the, the tower instead of trying to have to press like X, Y, X, Y, X, Y and move him left and right or anything. You just hold forward and press X and it makes him run up the tower, I suppose. I think it's it's more that kind of stuff that allows other people to um, that wouldn't normally play the game or would quit because they're like I don't have the hand eye coordination to do this shit or I don't have the the patience to figure out this puzzle so we'll just give them three blocks instead of a whole freaking wall of blocks that they have to figure out how to connect you know like Uncharted has some puzzles in it that you have to figure out and they kind of give you clues but it's probably more mainstream oriented where they're easier to figure out and if you get stuck you can still go like you said youtube yeah or so you get like the puzzle where you know the box you have to move is directly in front of you and lights up when you look at it <laughs> as opposed to one of these boxes you have to move good luck figuring out which box it is so i guess my thought on this is that it's probably i don't know that there's really been a game that was made difficult like too difficult and everybody was like what the hell I'm not playing that you know what I mean I, I don't know that there was a game like that where you do too much thinking or too much like uh, maybe the room which is like a phone game is a very difficult one like it's a puzzle game uh, that's one I can think of that is more recently released but a lot of people don't make it to the end because they either don't want to go look it up or there isn't something like blaring at you that here's where you need to go next um, but I, I think the the reason that we're seeing this trend towards easier games and, you know, gold arrow waypoints as to go here, do this, right? I mean, even in our first person shooters, there is a waypoint for everything. Not, mm -hmm. hey, uh, like even in Battlefield, right? They could be saying things like, head across the, the uh, rock quarry or the, you know, the shipyard and we'll meet you at this location. It would be so much, to me, it would be more interesting if you had to find that that position while under fire. Right. You know what I mean? Like, while you're doing that, as opposed to just run, you know, align your compass so that the waypoint is straight up and start running, yeah. you know, and make your way towards that. Um, I think it would be pretty interesting, but I think the reason they go that way is a, is a perception that our generation, maybe even the generation after us, is is the instant gratification uh, generation where, you know, the, they call it the Sesame Street generation yep. where, you know, my attention will only hold for... 30 seconds. Whatever <laughs> it is, right. And and I don't, I don't think that's really the case. Like I said, I don't think we really had a game that was like, it was so difficult that everybody was like, God, that game bombed, obviously. You know, who can hold my attention for that long? I mean... People even love that or celebrate it, like Dark Souls, which is touted as very difficult and will destroy you and you'll die and everything people are people gravitate towards that it's got such a strong audience behind it too you yeah. know and, and i will say like a couple of games that come to mind that that made me feel like it was more open and let me figure out where stuff is and how to do things were games like portal right mm -hmm. that was a really good puzzle game yeah but it's been a while you know yeah um Portal 2 was a little easier because you had to play it with two people. Or, well, well because they had the, the co-op levels. Yeah. In those levels, there's only one way to, yeah. to win it, as opposed to other ones, there are sometimes multiple ways you can solve it. But those puzzle games had me hung up for a while, but I really liked it. You know what I mean? Uh, the other one I'm going to say is Skyrim. Skyrim had oh. some world puzzles in it that were, I think kind of difficult to figure out like you had to talk to some townspeople to figure out you know like there was one one cave that was like magically protected or something like that and i had to go back i, I like found it 
then I went back and talked to the, the College of Magic mm -hmm. and was like asking around about it. And yep. now they told me new things now that I could describe what I saw down there. Yep. And I had to go back <clears throat> and I got into another room and I was stuck again. And, I, and so I was like, what the hell? So I went back to the college and the guy was like, well, there's only one guy that, that has claimed that he did this, and he's over in this other town. So yeah, I had to I go over that. to talk to that. And there weren't waypoints. I remember not this, the, yes. There are waypoints in the game, but for, like, these side quests, <clears throat> they just tell you that, oh, hey, there's somebody over here. Yes. And so you can set your own waypoint to that town or yeah, whatever. You're still going to find the guy you're supposed you, to talk to. Right. And, and sometimes... Uh, they'll say, like, it's, it'll be like a traveling merchant. This one wasn't a traveling merchant, but sometimes you gotta talk to, like, a traveling merchant. So you gotta figure out what his routes are, and find him, and, and talk to him, and, and what, and I think some of that is kind of fun. Yeah. In that it's not like, oh, guess what, you know, Edgar is in the same spot every flippin' day of his life. <laughs> I mean, like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. I think it was, it was fun that, that people closed up shop, went in, yep. that sort of thing. What? Well, I think that stems from, um, so it sounds like to me it's almost impatience, right? That's what, it's kind of what it is. Like, they know that they want to design their games to such a way that the beats happen so fast. But but are people on. <laughs> are people getting the experience that I got? I probably not. I didn't go to, to Google. Google. No, I didn't go on YouTube and figure out how to solve the puzzle. Other people might have just got there and said, "Screw it," you know. Well, yeah. Magic tunnel, how to solve? Yeah, and, and blah, and blah blah. That I mean that that design has been around for a long time since the '90s, even when like Final Fantasy VI three for the SNS at the time there were get to a point in the story where you would like branch off and you didn't know where to go and there was you know and they open up the whole world and you're like what do I do I just keep landing in towns and trying to find what the next thing that triggers the story event is and you don't really know unless you're paying attention yeah. so if you like come back to your save game you're like what the hell do I do now right you're so lost yeah so maybe the, I think that's part of it too is people, the frustration would cause people to not want to play their games so I they, think I think some of the open world stuff doesn't doesn't hurt as badly for this. Even mm -hmm. even though there have been like game guides around for a long time that, yeah. that do these same things. They tell you how to solve the puzzles. In some cases they don't. In some cases they say, I'm not going to tell you how to solve it, but here's right. where you need to go and here's who you need to talk to. So yeah. you get the experience. Uh, some of them will just flat out tell you, hey, the combination to the safe is this. Yeah, you know? and, and, and that sucks. That does suck. But I mean... Game guides have been around for a long time, and not everybody gets the game guide, you know, and not everybody does does that sort of thing. There was a, for a limited time with Skyrim, there was a hardback game guide for it. Mm. It was probably the best game guide I've ever bought. I didn't buy game guides for every game I've ever played, and, and I'm not usually a game guide buyer, but I had heard about how big Skyrim was, and I was like, hmm, we'll try it. So I got it, and it was really interesting because a lot of it was just the world was so big. There was like a catalog of, uh, okay, you wanted to find a merchant in what town, you know? And it had like all these indexes and references, and and it did have, uh, it did have a blurb on every single quest in the game, but it wasn't how to solve it. It was if you wanted to do this, here's what you get from it, and here's who you got to go to 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 start the quest. Right. Yeah. It wasn't. Here's what you step through. Here's how you solve it. And it, the other thing was, uh, it told you what level it thought you should be to start that quest. So some of it was like, hey, I want the best axe in the game. So you could use the game guide to figure out what the best axe was in the game, and then you know, sort of back reference on, okay, well, how do I get to start the quest that gives me that, or you know, whatever. And it could be a chain or whatever. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I don't know. I I like that approach. I agree that. Maybe Google has made it so that games can be too easy, you know what I mean, that, that are even intended to be difficult. Because yeah. I'm sure any of those portal levels, I bet every single one of those is on YouTube. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, it's all so, right. yeah. I don't know. I, I still think they should be striving to make games that make you sit there and think about it. But there is that delicate balance of if you make it so difficult that you can't, you're not even solving some of them, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? If you're, if you, get so frustrated and you spend so much time, eventually you are just going to look it up because you're like, okay, i got to get past this point. Yeah. I remember Assassin's Creed 2, they had those puzzles where you go and look at the like glyphs or whatever, and then mm. you get the puzzles where you got to solve like about, the Like the... Uh, Templar lore or something like that, I guess, or Yeah, whatever. from the first game, it was what unlocked the uh, Adam and Eve video. 
That was from the oh, that second game. game. That was the second game. game. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Second game. Spoilers, but it's, Spoilers, been, like, it's been like, what, five, six years. Video. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> it's been long enough. But it, yeah, that, that video was or unlocking that and doing those puzzles. I remember I made it a strict goal that I wasn't going to look it up. Right. And I was going to do the puzzles. And I think I made it through most of them. There was only like maybe one that I got stuck on and it was something stupid, you know, like my mind was looking for something that wasn't there or whatever. But those, like, you just, I, I think it, like I said, I think it puts it on the person themselves to, if they want to have the full experience, they have to media blackout. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got to like say, hey, I'm not going to go to Google unless it's absolutely uh, necessary. Plus, it's a time saver. I mean, that too. Like, as we get older, <clears throat> as we get more responsibilities and all of that, you know, it's it's hard to take the time to sit here and, and be frustrated on a puzzle for for hours and hours on end when you're like, I could, you know, I really need to finish this game and move on yeah. with my life. <laughs> you know, so there's some of that too. Yeah. What do you think, Chris? <clears throat> um, I would kind of like to see more of the uh, like helpful hint style presentations. Yeah. Uh, I went back and played Maniac Mansion, which is an old uh, PC game, like mm -hmm. a point and click. Yeah. And yeah, there were instances like I tried to play through it and not look anything up, but there were instances where you get stuck and it's like I have no idea, you know, what I'm not seeing or anything. I managed to find a site that was set up in such a way that you could kind of pick where you were at and who you were playing and what you were stuck on and it would be like well have you like you click on a little link and it would say well have you done this and if you say yes it's like well then did you look at this and you're like yes and then if it's like well have you also thought of this so it would basically after uh, they were helpful <coughs> helpful hints. Right, helpful hints so after seven or eight steps if you got down to the complete bottom it was like you know click this link to see the, the spoiler, answer, on, the spoiler on the answer on how to do it so for the most part, a couple of hints in, I could be like, oh, okay, yeah, I've totally forgot to look at something and pick up and, and continue on. So And go from that point without looking at any more yeah, hints. Yeah, yeah and, and complete that. So I think it would be nice, uh, and I don't know that there are a whole lot of games right now that really outside of like the little mini games like you mentioned with Assassin's Creed or yep. maybe some of the little puzzles and some of the other games. I don't that think would that be interesting if that was integrated <clears throat> into a, like if you made a game difficult, if there was a help, I'm stuck. You know what I mean? It gives you like little hints. Yeah, like some kind of hints or somebody you can talk to. I think there there have been a handful of games I know of, I can't think of the names off the top of my head, but where if the like if there's a person in the game that you're supposed to be talking to or that's in the area notices that you are obviously not getting where you're supposed to go, they kind of make some comment about what you should be doing. Yeah. Programmed like, into the game. Yeah, it's programmed mm -hmm. in the game. Like they're like, hey, why don't you come and you know look over here or go look in this area or you know I thought I saw something back here. Maybe you should go look at that yeah. and not tell you exactly where to go, but kind of give you a little hint. So maybe I, I was gonna say when it's programmed in like that, that's awesome. But writing documentation after the fact or wikis or like any of that kind of stuff where it has to be like you have to know the full story and then trying to do it without writing it, it's like a job in itself. Yeah. You know, there that's why the internet's nice because they can crowdsource that and you get people that put it up. But most people just go for the low hanging fruit. They're like, let's just show them exactly what they got to do because it's the fastest way to get and they this get video a lot off. of views. And they yeah yeah, yeah put put up here's the coins this is where the coins are in Mario. Just go look at this video, watch it, and now you know where everything is. There's no like, hey, did you kind of think about maybe it might be in this area or something yeah. You're like no, but because it takes longer to do that. That's well, let let what me it ask is. this. Uh, we've all played Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. Have we all done at least one of the collect all of one thing yeah. missions? Yep. Mm -hmm. Did you do them all without using an online map? Nope. Mm. The first one. Did you collect the first all one, of them? The first flag, no, I used the map. Okay. Because forget that crap. Oh my god. There, was so there were no flags. hints. Built yeah, there yeah. were no hints, and it's hard to keep track of which, which one, one you, you got. You it got. was hard enough now, even now, wait with a, a map. Wait yeah. a minute. Maybe I did actually do one. It might have been Brotherhood. Because the but feather see, showed up on the map. I was like, going to say, that, yeah. once you get to that, once yeah. you get into, I think, Assassin's Creed 3, maybe it was... I thought it was Brotherhood. I thought it was... It this Brotherhood 2 and a half? No, it's like 2 Brotherhood and Revelations. Revelations. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Brotherhood, I think, was the first one that started putting them actually on yeah, the map. Yeah, they gave you like the chest. Yeah. And from that point on, I didn't have to use a yep. map. But I mean... Yeah. I in think, those instances, I think it's good that there yeah. was an online resource. I might have, in two, not used a map 
To get the feathers? To get the feathers, but I think that's because it told you how many feathers were in an area. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it was like, you know, there are eight in this area, you have seven. Yeah, that's so right. One. Yeah, that's... And so it's like, okay, as long as I stay in the area, I'm sure I'll stumble across it running around the roost. Yep. It, it was divided better. Because the one was like, hey, find 50 flags in Jerusalem. And you're yeah. like, what the f Jerusalem, <laughs> that's like the giantest map ever. Uh, yeah. Right. Good luck with that. Yeah. It's enormous. Yeah, collection, collection stuff like that, I usually always go to a guide on. You know, just because... Maybe it, maybe it's just because I'm like... I just don't have want to spend time collecting stuff or looking for it. Unless it's, unless it's a really compelling exploration game. Like, you know, for me, it's like... I don't have any problems going to, to Google for, a, yeah, for, for collection collections. stuff. Or finding a very specific <clears throat> item, yeah. you know? Where do I get this from? Or, like... Uh, I keep bringing up Skyrim, but like where yeah, where yeah. you find a specific spell? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I thought there was one for invisibility. Well, how the hell do you get it? Oh, I gotta Over do here. this. Okay, okay start yeah. that quest. Do it. Yeah, that that kind of stuff. I don't. I don't guess I don't have a qualm doing or looking up because I don't have the time to sit there yeah. and collect as I get older. And for the most part, collection requirements don't impact the story that much. No, no. I've kind of really they kind of slow the game down if yep. you try and do them. Like, while you're pr while trying you're to play playing. through, it yeah. actually yeah, it actually kind of impacts your story. It makes it yeah. less... Like, if you're running in an area and you see something and you're like, oh, I want to get that real quick, you can run and grab that. But to be like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get all the feathers in this one area before I, I move on. I was going to say, that's actually dangerous, too. I'm almost like, when I see a collectible, I'm almost like, don't get it. Because it could be like, you know, you don't want to mess it up because that could be the one that you forgot in the list of... Yeah. Like, when you go back to it through a guide, unless you start with a guide in the beginning. And sometimes that's what I'll do. I'm like, I'm going to use the guide from the beginning the to get through the game to use it to get the feathers in the order because otherwise it's like impossible to go back and get the shit. Yeah. So I don't know. I I I nowadays I don't care anymore. It's just, as long as you don't care about achievements, guides or, or <clears throat> collecting is is young man's game as they say. Yeah, it depends on on what your level like if you're an achievement hunter, that's that's rough to go through it without looking it up because like Grand Theft Auto I like that I can play those games without um, without a guide and just sort of wander, yeah. you know. And if I if I miss a quest, if I miss a uh, mission, whatever, who cares? Yeah. You know, the game is only as fun as as long as you know I'm having fun in it. Yeah. So I, I do make some concessions when it comes to getting achievements. <laughs> like Fallout Three, there was an achievement for one quest where I didn't finish it quite right and was like way past it, and I was like, I'm not playing this again. Because it would require a playthrough. Right, Good yeah. God. Yeah, a lot of the Saints Row games have a completion requirement. Like, you know, get all this stuff done, and it's playing the same mini game over and over. I'm like, I don't have time. <laughs> moving on. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Speaking of moving on. <laughs> Battle shots. <laughs> Battle shots. Um, no. So, uh,. And speaking of YouTube... Much, and much funner game than Battle Shits. Yes, Battle Shits. Ooh, yeah, don't play that. Um, <laughs> speaking of, of going to Google and YouTube and watching things online, there's a uh, there's a little thing out there called Twitch. I don't know if you guys have heard of this thing. What? Yeah, Twitch? Yeah, Twitch, where, where people can actually stream their games live. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That, that, right? that sounds amazing. Yeah, so you could, you know that old, old style of sitting on the couch and watching your friend play? You can do internet now. Oh, shit. I know. No surprise. Uh, I, anyway, so I the... I hated that when I was young. I <laughs> now you... <laughs> how much more annoying it is over the <laughs> no, 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 go over there! Tell you can tell them. <laughs> There's a whole chat log. You can tell them. So you're like, I hate watching you play this game. <laughs> you can be like, hey, you totally missed that, that power-up back there. <laughs> When's my turn? <laughs> right. Doesn't work that way. Oh, so, okay. so what we're, uh, what we're alluding to here is that, um, there um, is maybe the possibility now with the amount of viewers you could get that you could potentially play games over Twitch and have an audience and build an audience. As your career. As your career. Um, I, I would say that there are... This has been a, a viable career for some. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that there's probably less than 100 Twitch streamers in the world that I would say could make an an ambitious living on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like And how so would you do that? Like what would you do? Well, you you'd have to be the right personality to make a living 
broadcasting almost anything you were doing, right? Because right? you have to be interesting enough. Your personality has to be funny enough that you want to watch them or or intriguing enough about how they play games or just that damn good enough at certain games that you want to watch them play as mm -hmm. opposed... Nobody wants to go to, you know, Walmart and watch the kid play, you know... Gran Turismo yeah, and crash he, into the wall. Yeah, as he you sucks know. it up. Right, right. Nobody wants to watch that. Unless <laughs> he's really funny at making fun of himself. It's because that e-brake. I was going to say, unless he initiates e-brake when he's starting Initiate to... Initiate drift. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that the, you've either got to have a spectacular personality to be able to do this, have incredible talent, which most, most of these people have several of, the, of these uh, characteristics... Yeah. Uh, or you have to have incredibly high production value on what you're doing. Uh, there are some guys that play League of Legends or uh, Dota 2 that are just amazing at how much production value they put into it. Like, they'll be a commentator. So he's not even the guy playing the game. He's just a commentator. And this guy makes a living commentating Dota 2 matches. So he is spectating two people playing that he does not know. Wow, and he's just watching what they're doing, and calling and, it out, and calling out how how feverish the the battle is, and and that guy, I read an article a while ago that that guy makes eighty thousand a year, what? eighty thousand U.S. What? commentating these, but it's the biggest audience on Twitch is watching these real time strategy games play out. That's true. The other one that just came in is Hearthstone which is like a digital card game, yeah, right? Yep. It's almost like Magic the Gathering, yep. but it's, it's... By Blizzard with the World of Warcraft. You got it, skin. you got yep. it. Yep. But, it. But it's digital. It's all digital. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are people that will um, have it almost like a Skype session with their board sitting in the middle. You yep. watch the Twitch feed, mm -hmm. and they're talking about every single card they play, and then, like, basically, their inner monologue, they are describing for everybody. And that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Like, my wife plays uh, Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. So I watched a couple of these Twitch streams, and the, the top guys, that is really interesting to see what's going through their head yeah. strategically as they do this. Now, what's, what's interesting about their stream is that they've got an intermediate guy that can talk, like, commentating the match, and then they've got the voice feed from the two guys, and they can't hear each other. Right, so the other guy is like controlling the audio so that you can hear whose turn it is, and they get to hear everything he's saying, and he doesn't have to worry about giving away to the other guy yeah. what he's about to play and what he's holding in his hand, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. Unless so, somebody was watching that was a friend. Oh, I mean, I, yes, any of these guys could on a second screen have up Twitch and watch but what's going on. But that would be on. so distracting. And... Yeah. Oh well, they probably have a, you know a gentleman's agreement or whatever. But it does make for an interesting. Interesting show. Now, not my thing, so I, you know, I watched it a couple yeah. of times and that was it. But I can see how those guys make it. It's like watching like celebrity poker or something where they're just sitting there and you see the hand and you know yeah, what they yeah. have. Uh, right, you can right. Kinda World see. Series of Poker got yep. big because people started watching it. Yep. You know what I mean? Not yep. because poker is such a huge game. Right, right. Um, that's how the, the bounties got up so high because everybody wanted to be in the public... World Series of Poker. Exactly. You know? and so it's sort of the same thing. Those that are competing at the very top level get some high-level stuff. Now, there are some differences here. There are some people that are good at games, not elite at games. Yeah. And are watched and subscribed and whatever because they are so hilarious or they're really interesting to watch how they play. Right. Yeah. So, like, uh, PewDiePie is one that comes to mind. He's good. But I'm not going to say he's elite at, at nearly any of the games he plays, right? Mm -mm. But he is so freaking funny, like, while he's he's playing. playing yeah. Like, his, his monologue that he just blurts out there is so hilarious that that's the reason people are tuning in, to watch what he has to say while he's playing, you know, whatever. And and I think for for people like that, yes, you can make a living playing that stuff. Now, PewDiePie, I believe, is still the top YouTube earner and Twitch earner. And I think his, like his YouTube... something, isn't it? Yeah, his YouTube income alone is up over a million. Yeah. His Twitch, I think, is like 300,000 or something like that. It's it's enormous. Wow. That's yeah. pretty ridiculous. Does he do it, like, full-time? Is he pretty much streaming oh, oh, all yeah, the yeah. time? Oh, yeah, yeah. He doesn't... I mean, he does... Uh, <clears throat> part of what makes that 
work for him is like his or, or like the Twitch people that that do make a lot is they have regular Twitch um, broadcasting intervals. So it's not just like oh hey I'm you know I've got you know an hour or two hours I'm gonna get on at some random ass time. You know it's it's. <laughs> 5.15 on a, you know, on a Wednesday, let me just hop on Twitch. What they do is is they set up, okay, at 5 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, at 11, they're going to start a new Twitch of yeah. something. Might be still playing the same game, hmm. but if you hop on at those times, like if he gets bored of it after an hour and a half or after an hour, he'll bring down the Twitch, and then you know that in two hours he's going to be back up again. Oh, okay. Right. So a lot of people can get in without being, oh, who's online right now? You know, they know he's going to have a Twitch going at this time or that time. Yeah. And some of the guys that aren't quite at a career level yet will say, I'm doing two Twitches, or two streams in a day, one at this time and one at that time. And they might be playing throughout that entire time. They might. But those are the times that they public times. That they, yeah. So that that is important. <clears throat> the other one, like if you're going to go into this, is like I said, you've got to have some of that personality. You've got to be able to talk fluidly, right? No matter whether you're just commentating or whether you're um, describing your gameplay, what you can't do is sit silently and play the game. <laughs> yeah. Like that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, people will get bored real fast. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has to be somewhat interactive. Because, I mean, really, if you just you know, play the game and, and just bitch the entire time, nobody's really going to want to watch you complain about the game. Like, you kind of have to take some of the licks as you play and kind of, you know, roll with them. Yeah. And I think some of that also, you have to interact with the people that are watching to a certain extent. Like, you kind of have to pay attention to the chat stream to a certain extent. It depends kinda... on how big you are. Right, because the, the guys that are really big don't yeah, have to oh, pay attention oh, to yeah, it. Oh, it's just too much. No. Yeah, right. Yeah. Too many people saying it'd be stuff. Too many, in the it'd, chat. Be, it'd be hard to follow. But yeah, some of the like when you're first starting up, it kind of seems like you need to you know kind of pay extra attention to interact with the people in the chat so that you know they come back and watch you play and possibly subscribe and and give you money and stuff like that. So. Absolutely. So it is potentially a revenue stream, but I don't I don't know. Without something fantastic about you, like you said, one of those characteristics or all the characteristics or something special, that there's a lot of room in that particular market for a lot of guys at the top. Yeah. I think really, it's, to me, it seems like a hundred like people kind of seems like would be about the most that market would really bear reasonably. Yeah. There's another article <laughs> I'm looking at on Forbes that's talking about... Uh, uh, about this, and it talks about League of Legends, which is another one of the real-time strategies. And it says MOBAs, yeah. It yeah. says that that uh, Twitch reported to them that there are twelve streamers f from League of Legends, yeah. twelve that make over a hundred thousand. Because everybody wa that they're the only ones that watch. They're the and those are guys that are probably really really good at the game, yeah. right? You know the big teams. And those I can see those you'd watch for tactics. So yeah, I mean in a game like that, you kind of want to have an idea. Like you'd want to watch people play StarCraft to see. You know, what's what the fastest doing. way to get a building or to get a base up and going so you could potentially, you know, beat your friends. Even if you're not in anything professional, it's still kind of nice to, like, steamroll your friends whenever you get together and Because you figured out the top guy's strategies on how yeah. to do yeah. this. Yeah, because you see how they do it and how they, you know, run around and manage resources and you can kind of yep. emulate it a little bit. And, and it's kind of nice. Yeah, it is nice to win. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you uh, sound like you've done this from experience. <laughs> no, 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 I just went off. No, what are you talking about? So, on this same topic, are there are there Twitch streams that you watch? I don't know. I don't have any that I watch regularly. Yeah. But there are a couple that I check from time to time. And and when you do find yourself watching Twitch, what do you watch it for? Yeah. Uh, the the first time I landed on Twitch actually watching somebody was when the Destiny beta came out because I oh, really wow. wanted to see. Ooh. So kinda, very recently. Yeah. yeah kind of see how that was playing. And there was one or two people I ended up watching and kind of uh, not subscribing to or anything but like following them and, and watching them play. And, and regularly I, they pretty much play League of Legends and since I don't play that at all I, I just kind of like, okay, whatever. They're playing League of Legends. Uh, but every once in a while they'll pop into Titanfall, and I might watch a little bit of them play in Titanfall just to kind of see how that works. But yeah. for the most part, I've never been a big fan of watching other people play games. It's It really, to me, kind of is the whole, like, sitting next to your friend watching them play. I'm like, all right, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? 
I don't want to watch you play this game. I'm glad you're glad you're glad you're doing it yourself. Yeah. I don't really want to watch you play this game. I want to play it. I'd say I'd say there's a market for it for people that aren't good at games though. Like if they don't want to play and they want to actually see a game played, you know. What? I I used to watch uh, watch friends play, but you're right. Like the control freak in me is just like, oh, yeah. I just want to grab the controller. I will say. Uh, Prior to Destiny, I had watched some of the Formula Fours of Pi. Like when you first when you first got into Fours of Five, that was pretty amusing to watch, just because you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but you were still decent enough. You were like commentating about it and, and making jokes along with everybody. But yeah, like watching you like wreck at this stuff was pretty funny. Yes, that that was at the point that I didn't have a. I was used to being a wheel driver and uh, <laughs> I had to go back to the. Controls. I had to go back. It was like I was drunk. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was, it was. You were hitting the brakes at like every turn. Oh my God. Yeah. I was locking it up every freaking time. It was funny. And then there's like a, there's like the second level in that in Forza 5 where it's like a Top Gear stunt or something like that, where they just litter the track with a bunch of crap that you have to, uh, there's no way around it. You must run into it and go around. And yeah, I was freaking out. (laughs) Initiate drift. (laughs) Yes. What the hell is going on? (laughs) Uh, that's awesome. I can say that even though we don't really try and like our our YouTube, like specifically for Formula Forza, our YouTube is it's much bigger for us than than uh, Twitch, uh, only because we don't have regular. I mean, other than our races, uh, we don't have regular broadcast times. Right. You know that we don't broadcast every day or anything yeah. like that. Um, but I can say that every time I do broadcast for more than like two hours, I tend to pick up like. 15 to 20 followers, Hmm. you know, and you have to get to the point to start getting any kind of subscribers. You kind of have to get to the point where every time you're on, there's a couple hundred people watching you. Yeah. That's when you start getting people subscribing because then, then you get like, once you get a certain following, uh, Twitch will start putting more and more ads on you. Yeah. And the subscribe takes away the ads. And in some instances, people can just straight up donate yeah. instead of a monthly subscribe. They can just straight up five or like ten dollars, yeah. right? Whatever. And and for the top guys, some of those donates, and you know, because they're not watching that crazy stream of of like if you've ever gone on to some of the top streamers and watched the chat log, it scrolls so fast you cannot keep up with anything that's happening in there. So people are just like nonstop posting faces and emoticons and, you know, what if, nobody's reading that. Yeah. Um, so the donates uh, for some of the top streamers will, they can like put a message in there and the donate will show up on the, on like on the overlay for the stream and their message. And he'll, he'll watch that and comment on those. Yeah. Oh, nice. So in some of those instances, it's just like you pay to get a word in. Yeah. You know, or wow. to get a, not a word, but I mean, but, a, a, a statement, yeah. you know, a question, a, a whatever. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen the donates be used for equipment, like buying a better microphone or a, a slightly better Green setup. screen. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Green screen. Um, and some of the perks I've seen are uh, people that play a lot of multiplayer will give subscribers preference. So when they're online... Oh, if, to hop in their lives. Yeah, you know, you'll be on their friends list and you'll get, you know, you'll get preferential treatment for an invite into the lobby and stuff like that. So, and that could be kind of fun if there's somebody you like watching and like playing it. it you may not be popular streaming, but it almost kind of makes you feel like a kind of quasi-celebrity you're, because you're, you're cool on their the stream cool so everybody yeah. sees your name. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> yeah, I can see. I can see where there'd be some allure to that. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I think we talked this one to death. Speaking of death, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god, another terrible segue. <laughs> Oculus Rift dying in 2015. No, actually, the Oculus Rift you had an, uh, its date announced, right? 2015. 2015, May 2015. Now, this is the second release date they've had for this. They said this year. This is this, this is commercial was, release, right? Yeah, this commercial. is another dev kit. Not, not another, another dev, dev kit. Because they just had Dev Kit 2 come out yes. not that long ago, right? Yep. Dev Kit 2 came out in the spring. And it has been released to more people. But they were going to do a standard dev release this summer. Okay. It was supposed to be July 2014 was a release date. And then uh, in the spring, was that April? Mm-hmm. They, they got bought by Facebook. The book. Yep. The book by the face. book of faces. Um, and it wasn't. I want to say it was May 
then. So the very next month, they announced that the, it was going to be a dev kit two, um, it, or that that the technology that was in that it was yeah. that was going to be the release, and mm-hmm. it was going to be in another year. So it was going to be in summer twenty fifteen or what? Is, what is it? May twenty fifteen yeah. or something like that. Yep. Um, so yeah, the, the the question is, was Facebook a good thing for them? Was this an inevitable thing that was going to happen? They were never going to meet that first date? Uh, I think it gives them the opportunity to make that date with better technology. They could have made it, but it would have been... And it would have been better. From what I've heard of people talking about DevKit 2, DevKit 2 does address several of the issues of the first DevKit. Um, I believe the screen resolution is better. I've heard people say that uh, on DevKit 1 there was some jitter that kind of yeah, made you a little motion sick. sick. Yeah. That has been... Mostly cleared up in DevKit 2. DevKit 2, I believe, is uh, smaller. Or not, I think it's not necessarily smaller, but more compact. So there's less... There's a better interface for hooking it up to your PC, I think. They use IR on it, I think, as well, for your head. Yeah, the tracking. Head, head so tracking that, that it's IR more... Like that. So, you don't feel as sick about <clears throat> moving so, your head. So, yeah, I think, it, I think the, the good thing is uh, they were able to put out what they might have put out as production as DevKit 2, and Facebook has kind of given them the ability to say, well, we're here, but in another year, we think we're going to be where we kind of wanted to be when we put this out to the public. Yeah. Um, it's still a very interesting peripheral. And I, I think, you know, I don't know that maybe Facebook is adding polish on what would have already come out. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know, but... Um, I think Dev, Dev Kit 2 was already in the works before Facebook. It was already, it was actually already released, right? It was like March or something like that. But yeah, the Crystal Cove, whatever they dubbed Crystal Cove, because they demoed it in January or February. It was some big uh, conference that it was at. Yep. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm going to attribute some of the manufacturing side and some of the uh, the polish to whatever it looks like that it's going to look more polished now that, that Facebook is in. Now, I've seen some um, I've seen some games here recently or some some videos here recently of people using the DK2 to um, to do like track IR or whatever, whatever they're using for that head tracking. Mm -hmm. And holy cow, is it smooth. It is really, really smooth. So they definitely have worked out some, some stuff there, but it still requires a super high end computer. Yeah. Well, just because you have to run the frames at so high, because it has to be like plus like two screens for two screens. Yeah. And you have to, if you dip below 60, well, uh, I guess that's when you start getting sick. Is when it starts dipping lower you than get the, like it, you get that you, the you feel nauseous. like you're drunk. Yeah, yeah, you get that nauseous feeling of like not tracking your head quite right when you're moving in, yeah. and, and that's why people get sick from it as well. Yeah, I also heard an interesting statistic that they said uh, um, uh, that females actually tend to get sicker from it. They've noticed uh, there's like a some sort of statistic or some sort of test that they. They've noticed that more females have reported nausea from using the, the Facebook and than males, huh? uh, than males. Yeah, wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attribute that to the the test apparatus smelling like Cheetos. Yeah, it could be. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Allergic. Because like, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So yes. there's, there's yes. like, you know, guys 90 are like percent uh, Cheetos. Guys right. are like, all right. Game. Yeah. Women are like Cheetos. <laughs> 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 right, right. Because at the at the dev conferences, it smells like the ninety other guys that tried it on before that one chick tried yeah, it on. So she's like, like oh. God, this smells like 90, 90 friggin' nerds tried this on first. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hmm, this is an interesting trend. <laughs> yeah, that could be. It might be, but I don't know. I don't I, know. Not that that's uh, any bearing for it. It just might be something different <clears throat> between the way. Um, I, I think they were saying between the way men and women distinguish three D spaces. Hmm. Um, and I, I don't know if it's, you know, if it's just specific to gen- gender in that way, but yeah. that they said that that's how, uh, that's what they say. I don't know. <laughs> so, so here's the, the other question on this is now that things are looking more refined, more polished, we have a set date that we're pretty sure is going to meet now yep. that there's somebody else, a big investor on board, uh, are you going to get 
into PC gaming more than you already do? No, because I'm mm. already way into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, of here, of here, I'm the probably the one that has plays been PC in, games the most. PC games yeah. the most. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, um, I don't know that I'd get more into it if I just would continue. Yeah. And I think Oculus would work great for. Uh, so I, I came into console gaming again. I mean, I've been playing consoles since I was a kid, but I mean, not really. It wasn't my primary mode of, of gaming. It was always PC mm -hmm. until probably 2007 or so. And that's when I picked up a Xbox 360 and uh, started really getting into Forza and all the rest of the games, right? Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I think that this m might be a tipping point for me to at least evenly distribute my time yeah. between PC and consoles. <clears throat> I, I'm still, I still feel strongly that consoles give you better experience. I'm going to argue yes, and not for the reasons that people would argue about. Like people, and I don't want to turn this into just a totally derail to a PC versus console. But I mean, I, I think I get more out of the experience on consoles, so I think it's going to be rough for me to Would totally... Would you say that, uh, that console gaming is less headaches, right? You know, maybe cause less migraines? <laughs> I, even, <laughs> even if it was a totally stable environment on PCs, I personally feel like the community is, is way easier to get into and get, like, if, even if you're not playing with your friends. I yeah. think it's, it's much easier to get involved with other people on consoles and I would say more so on an Xbox than I would say a PlayStation. Uh, like last gen, I had both. Yeah. And it was way easier to start making those connections. communities and yep. connections and, and whatever on an Xbox than it was on a PlayStation. I'd say barriers to entry. Yeah, right. For PC, you know, there's <clears throat> so many peripherals you have to get hardware wise. Um, and everything updates itself so quickly because it is so easy to update. You yes, know what I mean? Yes. Because it is it is ridiculously easy to update, there are updates out there, hardware-wise, yeah. for lots of stuff. And because mm -hmm. games have sort of the graphical slider that you can, you know, it's not a one-time experience of this is all this is the max of what you can do with this game. Because that doesn't exist on PC, right? There are there you can slide it all the way up towards the super high end games as opposed to if you slide it towards the low end it's it's maybe a little worse than you get on consoles but you know you can you can put that slider significantly higher than you can on on consoles yeah, you know you at all you have no control right that. right on consoles <clears throat> it's a here's here's the experience the we provide experience. on this yeah. console yeah. and that's what you get yeah and, and some people like that. They like the standardization that... I, I do. Yeah, that I you do. know that when you go in, it's either going to run at 30 or 60 frames every time. Every time you get in. It might, you might get some slowdown here and there. Rarely happen. I mean, it happens on the And if I'm getting artifacting, everybody else is getting artifacting, and they're probably going to fix it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, or I mean, or there's just no way to fix it because of the hardware. But, but then my you know. experience is not lessened by my hardware. You they know, have right? more people dedicated to making sure that experience for that specific box and that make and it's a lot easier to hit those targets when you have this is my environment my closed garden if you will or walled garden versus on the pc you're gonna have you know well, who knows who knows right, right. how many they're gonna say hey we recommend nvidia chips or we yeah. recommend ati chips who, yeah. who they made a deal yeah. with that week you know, right whoever, you have a minimum the requirement dice. that will run the game you won't enjoy playing the game at running at that yeah right level frame rate yeah that's kind of where I've been, is I've perpetually been behind as far as PC gaming goes. Uh, I've just never, like, I pretty much built a computer and then sat on it for six or seven years. And that's a long time to go without, you know, an, upgrade. without, without an upgrade for games or anything. So, um, Which is crazy, because six or seven years and you'd still be getting the same experience on a console. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've pretty much been on consoles. At, at a third of the entry price. Right. Right, yeah, I've... Uh, right, I mean, even at $500 for, for the Xbox One, yep. yeah. if you built something... Like, when you build a, a gaming PC, you generally go with something that's yeah. going to be robust enough. If, if you want it to last six or seven years, you're going to build something that's robust enough. You're probably looking at 1000 to 1500 yep. Right, I right. And even that. then, even if it lasts that long, you know, there may be technology jumps that you... If you don't keep up with... You're not playing it at the intended 
resolutions, right. not playing it at the intended frame rates. Yep. I would say that this gen, not this generation, but like the Xbox 360 and the PS3, because it went on for so long, it stretched out the life of those components. Like, um, for instance, I'm still running the i7 I put in in 2009 in my computer now, and it's still great. Like, I don't need to replace that. I'm not having CPU limitations, even though it's an old-ass i7 at this point. You know, there's been so many technology leaps since then. But um, your graphics card... I mean, your processor... The, the, the thing about the i7... Now we're really off topic. But I mean, no. the, the <laughs> thing about the i7 is it was so ahead of its time, really, yeah. when it did come out. I think it came out like the first i7s were coming out about the time. 2008? I, think, I wanted to say it was about the first time the first Iron Man movie came yeah, out. Yeah, 2008. So, uh, you Seven, know, I mean, that's, 2008. Man, mm-hmm. it was well ahead of its time because I could throw anything at that and... Not even get close to pegging the processor. Right. Not yeah. even close. Yeah, i7s were like the epitome of awesome processor. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Like when even came out. like when when Pentium fours first came out, right? Everybody was like, "Oh my god, a huge step step forward." You could still peg those processors pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. And now you look at okay, graphics cards. You can peg those pretty quickly. Yeah. But your your processor itself is. You know, hardly, hardly being pegged anymore. Yeah, I think our and our still peg a core too, but yeah, yeah. our limitations at this point are uh, probably geared more towards storing the amount of memory and memory you need for the graphics and for the engine and everything into memory and into GPU. memory and GPU yeah. so that you can actually run it and have it be smooth, so it's it's accessible. Yeah, and as you soon as all they, those calculations done. As, as soon as they get a GPU that's the equivalent of the i7, <laughs> holy crap! Yeah, I mean. You know, people were people are still running the Titan. The Titan's been out, I think, a couple of years now, or maybe a year or two. The I, Titan is an expensive Titan, card. Yeah, now. it's a really expensive card. And you know, I my my graphics card. I'm still running a 580 GTX, um, and it's you know it, I've not had any problems with any sort of games at this point. You know, like it's lasted longer than the the old barrier to entry, and, and I think that's because of the console life. You know. <clears throat> that that span will always be there where they have to develop for the lowest common denominator. And part of that is also the okay, so the five eighty GTX, you went for the the Rolls Royce of video uh, cards. of NVIDIA yep. graphics cards when the five hundred series was out. Yep. There's nothing higher than the well, five ninety, but is there a five ninety? It's a five ninety, yeah. So the in later series there was like the six eighty and the seven eighty and those are all yep. those are all like the top end. Yeah, it's usually five ninety is like you double the price of the 580. That's how, like, NVIDIA's weird... Are almost, almost should have gone for a Titan if you were going to go above a Yeah, exactly. Like, a 590 at that point is, like, holy crap. It's, like... $800 you, graphics you, Yeah, card. or not, or 1000 yeah. actually, when they come out. You know, they just... And for not that much more performance. That's the way I looked at it. It's, like, they, they tier their stuff. You can see it yeah. every well, time. Well, okay, to try and get this back, back towards uh, the Oculus, I do think that I'm going to... I have to rethink how I'm going to set up my little gaming center because... Well, you're probably going to have to upgrade. My PC? To run Oculus, you know, potentially, right? I mean, I don't a... think so. Well, maybe not. You you recently... I just, I just built that this year. Okay. So, yeah, you probably won't. I might have to if I want to yeah. run some of the... If you want to run future games Cause, cause in Oculus, yes. Mine, mine says, or my graphics card and everything is... Uh, Capable of, of doing 1080 1080p for four screens at 60 frames. Oh, okay. So I I think I will be okay on on oh, it's because it's but two the, screens, yeah. Right, but the the question is if as the games progress and as the physics get better and you know there's a lot more going on than just rendering four 1080p images. Yeah. You know? I mean, you have a potential. It's funny because that will make you want to upgrade more. Like having having your Oculus mess up because it's not a matter of well this kind of looks worse than it it would it's more like this is making me yeah, sick yeah. I can't even play it I have to upgrade in order to yeah. actually use my Oculus so. we'll see how it goes but I, I think I'm gonna try the Oculus with uh, Star Citizen oh man and probably Project Cars coming up um, Star Citizen's gonna be a graphic that's gonna be a good one game. yeah you're gonna have to really I built it I built it to almost double what their recommended. Uh, PC was the the my PC I dubbed the the Titan <laughs> was uh, about twenty eight 
twenty eight hundred dollars worth wow. of PC. It was ridiculous. Like, yeah, which is on a desktop. That's crazy these days. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not even anywhere near. <laughs> yeah, anything like that. Well, it might you... be. It might be nice to to see it in in action, but I don't think I'm gonna get into. I'm it. not gonna be on the front edge of that particular wave. Here's the other thing that that kind of turns me off about Oculus, and I guess I hadn't really considered it. So, you know, it'd be one thing when you you can hide yourself away and and play with it, or you know, play with ooh, play, play with, with yourself, play with yourself. No, play with an Oculus and everything. But then there's always that creepy factor. You're like, you know, if I'm if I'm playing games and I'm closing off the world, like, what happens if somebody? What if my house is on fire? No. I mean, you could smell it, right? But like, what if like? Hopefully, your your fire alarms are louder than the headphones. <laughs> but like, what if somebody breaks into your house? It's it's too much isolation. Yeah, I almost I, I get a little. There's a little bit of concern to me that you shut everything out at that point. Because like when I'm playing on a screen, I'm looking at the screen. I still have my peripheral vision. I can still see. Somebody coming downstairs, or somebody, you know. <laughs> you're right. saying you're going to get looted. The I'm guy's just, not even going to disturb you. Yeah, right. he's just going to be down here grabbing everything right. that, you know, that belongs. It's, so long as he doesn't make too much noise. Yeah. Tap you on the shoulder and you're going to crap your pants. Shh. You know, Slender Man's going to be yeah, right behind Slender me. Be so. right behind no, I, there, there is a little bit of it, and I think that kind of scares me a little bit. But at the same time, it makes me excited because I'm like, man, I'm finally going to get that immersive yeah. experience. The, the promise of VR that was never fulfilled. Yeah, Virtual Boy just did not do it. Yeah. Just did not the only it. other thing that I've seen that's really kind of interesting and I don't know enough about it that we can really discuss a whole lot is Samsung has set up, I want to say they have developed some sort of program where they have said, what we're going to do is we're going to develop a standard set of VR hardware and it's up to you how you want to implement it. Oh, so you're thinking this might be possible for... So, yeah, that I don't know if it's if it's in conjunction with Oculus or Oculus was planning on using it. And Samsung is like, well, listen, we'll just open it up to everybody. And, you know, if, if Oculus comes out on top, hooray. If somebody else does a better job, who cares? They're still using Samsung hardware, and that's all we care about. So here's an interesting thing. I, I've read that they're estimating the DK2 um, commercial release at somewhere between three and four hundred dollars okay which is a retardedly cheap peripheral that does that much wow yeah. but the thing is at three and four hundred dollars that is the price of a playstation 4 yeah right right, right. it's a console basically mm -hmm. <laughs> right so if something like that is released for a for xbox one i would be elated yeah but how much adoption would that really get? Would that be the HD no, DVD man. player? As, as, oh, as, oh, much, yeah. as much as people have balked at the friggin' Kinect. Yeah. Right, that's to, $180. And, and to yeah. be honest with you, I don't know that they could release it and get enough market because I don't think, frankly, the Xbox One or even the PS4 has enough power I, you to know what? power it. I totally agree with you that. You know what after, I mean? That's after, what... seeing, after seeing the console and seeing where it's at yeah. graphically... The fact that, that that every game isn't 1080p, 60 frames, yeah. there's no way they could do that. No, Th There's no way they sick. could do even 720, 60 frames for two screens yeah. and do all that. And yet, yet alone, I mean, Sony's already got their own VR. Their, now that's the something Morpheus. Like, yeah, goofy, Morpheus. like, uh, like do like chaining consoles together or something stupid like that. Oh, like they used to do for the 360 triple screens right. where you yeah, had to have three or, consoles oh, and three yeah. copies of the game? That's, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> no thank you yeah so, i don't know it'll be interesting to see what ends up coming out next year and what kind of comes out either as a direct competitor or kind of also ran in the next year to kind of because there's got to be even if even if morpheus never you know materializes something's got to come out of that because they announced it yeah but it'll be interesting to see if there are multiple or if there are more takes on well we've got a vr headset that we think is good enough or is also decent yeah. that, you know, we came out with sooner. Yep. Check this one out. It'll drive the competition. Yeah. For sure. The other thing that's sort of on the forefront here and is definitely not very cheap is um, devices like Google Glass. And not that I just want this to just snake right <laughs> on out of the, the topic, but I mean, we're kind of staying on topic with Oculus here, yeah. but um, augmented reality devices, right? Yeah. I could see something like that ha getting integration for games, consoles. Maybe it's not your full screen is on that, but right. like, okay, TV, and you wear a set of 
glasses that has like a little display on it that right. maybe does your ammo on it. Maybe okay. it does your inventory. Maybe it does your your health and you know your other overlays. Like, like a HUD, a HUD instead yeah. of a full game. Right. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Or maybe that manages your your like friends Toms or something. Yeah, yeah right. right. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I, I'd be I'd be interested to see what what yeah. happens with that. Should be cool. We'll have to keep our eyes on that then. Indeed. But I am actually a little excited for Project Morpheus, even though I'm not a big uh, PlayStation fan, uh, because it breeds competition, doesn't it? Right. If they come out with something and That's Microsoft really good. doesn't, right? Hey, and the only other really cool thing about this, even though it's completely off topic, is because of the nature <laughs> of the technology they're using, because they kind of are using these digital display screens. It should hopefully make cell phones cheaper. <laughs> oh, that's true. Because <laughs> you point. now have multiple markets using the same that's technology. A that's a good so point. So economy of scale will make those make cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Because the DK2 is what using some Samsung OLED screens, right? Yes. And that they were originally thinking how in the world because it was like two screens from phones that cost four or five hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. And they were saying. Oh, sweet. So we're going to take two screens from phones that cost four or $500 a piece, cram them into a device that does all this other stuff. Yeah. And, and, and then try to charge three, charge three or four hundred dollars. Good right. luck. Yeah, subsidize the hell out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Right. So, oh. Those Oculus ads. Those Oculus. Yes. Well, guys, I think we're, uh, we've come to the end of this topic. We, uh, we had some tangents. And we went all over the place, mm. just like I'm going right now. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Um, we do have a little bit of sad news, I guess, for the uh, the end of this podcast here. This is going to be our... Should find some violin music to play behind this. <laughs> no, um, we're, uh, we're actually going to be on a little bit of an indefinite hiatus for uh, the Fairly Awesome podcast after this one. Um, you know, as a, at least take a break here for a while. A break, yeah. yeah. We, you know, and we may come back and and start fresh with it in a new format in the future here, or keep doing the podcast. But yeah. um, you know, we're all older gentlemen, and and we've all got responsibilities. And, and it smells. And it yeah, and it smells in here. To be, to be honest, Nate yeah. ba- Nate's basement does smell. Well, yeah. Well, now like, you let him know where we do it. Like old balls. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you storing so many old balls? <laughs> well, you basketballs. Know, basketballs. Well, that's, that's what I'm. Who, who doesn't like sports, right? You know, it's not, no, I'm just old balls in a gym. <laughs> 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 wow. Oh man, uh, that's horrible. But, you guys are taking all the all the, the <laughs> sadness away from this. I'm just gonna leave this on a somber uh, note. Uh, we are, you know. It, We'll uh we'll still keep the page up running and, and yeah, we'll still be on Twitter. Occasionally we'll still, we'll still be post posting on Twitter. Yeah, and, Houston. and you know if you guys do have questions or any comments, you know we'll definitely be getting back to you. It's just probably not going to have content up for at least a while until yeah. we know at least the foreseeable future. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you know do stick around. Don't unlike us just yet. We're not. Go, we're not all dying off the face of the earth after this podcast, but just you know, we uh, we we only do this in our spare time, and and honestly, a lot of us don't have a lot of it anymore. We've all run out. Yeah, we've all, all our spare time has been taken from us. So, but we appreciate you guys listening and and following us for this last year. You know, it's been quite the journey. Indeed, we've uh, we've all learned a lot along the way. We found out Ryan's gay, and hey, wait, wait, what? Chris is. Sort of into him. And, I'm, I'm all for it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? No, wait. Huh? Nick. Josh is the owner What's of the Go Ram Internet. And, that is true. Yeah. You know, Stoughton had some, I've been. some, uh, some children along the way. Yeah. Not along the way. I, which, I don't, we should not go there. Yeah, huh? No, just huh? That, that train of thought, <laughs> throwing children into it. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> It might be confusing for people listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, you can you can <clears throat> like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash fairly awesome podcast. Or, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter yeah. at FAPcast. You know, I feel like this is kind of like... No, no, no. The Twitter might be the only thing that... Uh, yeah. yeah. That, we'll that, still that's still, we'll stuff still post stuff on Twitter. You can still follow us and yeah. get funny content here. And, and once there. Destiny comes out, we'll be busy streaming the shit out of that. Yes, Ooh, indeed. that's true. We may have to set up a fairly awesome podcast, uh, like Twitch a Twitch stream. Yeah. Twitch stream. So yeah, maybe we'll have that there in the future. But 
We'll see you on podcasts. Mayhaps. <clears throat> Mayhaps. 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 Anyway, this is, uh, this is Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo, signing off. What? <laughs> <laughs> An alien. Alien reference. Is this Prometheus joke? No! Ah, oh, bringing the Prometheus up. Uh, no. Going out on a high note. All right, thanks for listening, guys. See you later. See, See ya. ya. Ah, bees! <laughs> okay. They're ripping my okay. flesh off. Your firearms are used. We just watched uh, that last night. Tommy Boy? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, because she was talking about wanting to do it. And then we watched Tommy Boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry, guys. How does that smell? Everybody take it in. <laughs> You're polluting my water. I mean, he just made his own Diablo expansion over there. I did. Bra- Reaper of souls. <laughs> Reaper of ass. <laughs> Ripper of ass. Mm-hmm.